Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I'd like to welcome you to today's episode of Between Friends. We're going to talk all about hooping, you know, the difference between hooping on a tubular machine or a flatbed machine. We often refer to it as single needle and multi-needle, but there are tubular machines that just have one needle. Oh, we have lots of friends signing in. That's so lovely. We have Judy Warren, Aloha. Thanks for joining us. And Joanne Banco from Let's Go Sew. Oh, Marie and I have had so much fun with Joanne Banco through the years. So that's really um, lovely that you're joining us today. And Diane Constance and Jennifer Alexander, thanks for joining us. You ladies signed in early. We appreciate that. Um, so if you have any friends who... Um, are interested in learning about hooping, invite them to watch today's show. Or maybe you uh, have met the Stitching Sisters over the years and you're excited to see Marie join us because uh, she doesn't come very often. She's got a whole new life going on. So I, it's hard for me to talk her into. But hello, Lindsay Zeno. That's our my niece, Marie's daughter from Ohio. It's lovely to have her here. She too is a Stitching Sister and uh, quite a prolific one. So let's, you know, I just thought I would share what, how I feel when I know my sister's coming. Now, you know, you never know um, who makes some of these really great slides, but this is one that maybe many of you have seen on the internet. And that is exactly how I feel when my stitch and sister Marie Zeno is coming over. So let's go ahead and welcome Marie from hailing, to, hailing today from Bonita Springs, Florida. Hi, Hi, hello, hello. Oh, it's so nice to see you, sister. So nice uh, to be here. It's just great to have you here for sure. We have so many Aww. friends joining us. Uh, <laughs> Laurie from Albrecht, she met us at uh, the Brother Convention many times. Yeah, oh, they were fun. fun times for sure. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. We have um, Sunette Morris is from South Africa. We have somebody watching wow. from Norway. I know. Oh, we oh, haven't made it to those places. We have not. <laughs> we have not. But we have been out in Washington State. And here's Natalie oh, yeah. from uh, Mount Vernon. Absolutely. So, um, you know, Marie, it's really been a fun journey, hasn't oh, it? It was. It is. Yeah. I mean, still can be. Yeah, we've for had sure. Some... And through the years, you know, we yeah. um, have just, you know, had the honor of meeting embroiderers from all over the U.S. As yeah. we traveled, we did it for like six years, where we went, you know, right. coast to coast to a sewing machine retailer who would invite us to their store and bring right. us in. We would do two days of hands-on fun. And yep. um, it was wow. amazing how we were always able to connect, meet at the airport within 30 minutes of each other. I know. Right? Never had a cancellation when yeah. we were connecting and teaching. Only, right. only when we were doing fun travel did we have a cancellation. That's right. That's right. But literally, yeah. you would come from Ohio. I would come from Dallas, wherever we were meeting. And within 30 amazing. minutes, you know, one, the other yeah. one would arrive. I know. And it was boy, really, we have luggage. Talk about baggage. Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> we said in our next life, we're going to be beaders. Remember, we just yes. walk around with some little beads. Yeah. yeah, tiny little, you know, layers <laughs> of beads, right? Tiny that's little right. boxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, let's yeah. see. Jackie Coleman Arnold, she says, it's nice to see us again. She met us in Virginia years ago. Oh, oh that Virginia oh. event was quite memorable. Our the mother with, came with us and all of our right. sisters attended. And some of the most amazing food. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I do. And we celebrated mom's 80th birthday. Did, there. Yeah. yeah, that was, was really special. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, let's see. Hey, Carol Menton's joining us. She's from St. Augustine and she's the oldest of seven oh, girls. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Hi, Carol. That's so yeah. Neat. Well, Marie and I are smack dab in the middle of six sisters. I'm number three and she's number four. And we're That's 12 right. years top to bottom and her and I are in the middle. So that's right. I know. Too fun. Too fun. So let's take a look at some of the slides. You know, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time down memory lane, but just a little bit because it sure is fun. Um, oh, here wow. is Marie, you're signing a machine from somebody yeah. who just bought it, right? I know. I think that was in Atlanta, one of our dealers in Atlanta, wow. one of the mm. brother events. That was so yes. fun. Discover yeah. Sewing, maybe. You yeah. know, we did quite a few events. Oh, and speaking Absolutely. of Let's Go Sew and Joanne Banco, this is on the set oh, of It's So Easy, right? That's right. A couple sets ago, for sure. But yeah, that mm -hmm. was a super fun experience. Yeah. yeah. I don't Very know fun. where that aqua blouse is anymore. That was really pretty. Yeah, that was pretty. <laughs> 
don't know where that. I well, could use it down here in Florida. It's actually. I'm really sure cool. you could. I'm <laughs> sure you could. And I'll use your denim jacket. This yeah. is uh, at the end of Route 66, right? Yeah, that's right. California, Santa Monica. Yeah. We took mm -hmm. Lindsay on that trip, I think, didn't we, Lindsay? <laughs> and we spent a yeah. lot of Mother's Days, you know, in a row out in uh, Southern California. Yeah. Remember? It yeah, we realized it, it wasn't horrible. Remember? It wasn't horrible <laughs> to be, you know, in Southern California. Southern California. Right? Yeah, it was yeah. great. Here's Sharon mm -hmm. Schroeder. She says she saw both of us at a Moore's event years oh, ago. Yeah. Yep. They, they were some of our Mother's Day events out at Moore's for sure. Absolutely. Remember? It yep. was great. Lindsay Zeno <laughs> says, yes. Yeah. yeah. So fun. <laughs> okay. So let's see. What else do we, um, where else did we, oh, we've met so many famous people. Yeah. That was Nashville. <laughs> that was in Nashville. I remember that. Yeah. Walking down the street. Remember? Oh, crazy um, things, right? Crazy things Elvis. happened there. And Santa Same. Claus. <laughs> this poor man was having dinner <laughs> in the same restaurant we were. And I'm That's like, right. oh. There's Santa. We got to get our picture. Yeah, we were hoping that's what he's trying to look like with Santa. I mean, I think that's that was the look he was going for. But <laughs> right. <laughs> well, he's quite that's handsome, great. Santa, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's so fun. Yeah. And then we've had really romantic dinners, just the two of us, oh, right? Yeah. We've had a lot of those. But this special restaurant in um, Palm Coast has lit menus, which we really like yeah. because our our, our, yeah. our eyesight started going. <laughs> Right, right. Very helpful. <laughs> Absolutely. Kind of wish, you know, every restaurant had that. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> right. So oh, funny. here Patricia Kenny, Kennedy says that she saw us in Augusta, Georgia, oh, with Jeff oh, Selling yeah. Center. That was oh, a that fabulous was event. That was, that so was nice. fun. You have yeah. a great memory of Jeff. I, you know, I don't know if he still owns the store, but um, remember yeah. what he did for his one yeah. customer? Yeah. Uh, with, yeah, he went and picked up. No, I thought that some of the machines didn't show up and he went and picked them up himself or one of yeah, the Yeah, UPS wouldn't him. deliver or some crazy yeah. thing. And, yeah, some and crazy yeah thing. right. But amazing. he had a he had a, a customer, a really, really good customer who was grieving for the loss of her husband. And he yeah. gave her keys to the store so that's she great. could come in and sew at any time. Oh, you remember that's that? Right. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Nice uh, let's see. The nicest people at these events. Absolutely. 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 So Patsy Downer says, where are the other sisters and do they sew? Well, wow. uh, one sews. Um, mm -hmm. and we are spread out. So the oldest is in Florida, very close to Marie. Mm -hmm. And then number two lives in Yardley, Pennsylvania. And she is a nurse by trade but a artist. She paints beautifully. She also does a lot of hand embroidery, you know, that's yes. four letter word, but she does beautiful <laughs> work. Right? right, right. Yeah. And then, uh, then I'm in Dallas. I'm number three. Marie is also in Florida. Number four, yeah. five and six are the twins. And yeah. the, uh, the oldest of the twins is in Boston, Massachusetts. And number six is in Manhattan. Isn't that yeah. fun? And they all, they all yeah. have their special gifts. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and here's Teresa. She's our baby. Aww. She's the youngest one. She says, I'm a sister, but I don't sew. But boy, is she talented. She has yeah. lots of talent. She's she does. rather brilliant uh -huh. and uh, so fun. lives a very urban lifestyle in New York, you yeah. know, married with a, a fantastic son. So thanks mm -hmm. for joining us, Teresa. I'm sure she's got a meeting she has to run to pretty soon because <laughs> she's a pretty busy lady. All right. So yeah. where else did we go? Well, oh, I look at those. Never <laughs> yeah, we had romantic dinners and pretty lousy lunches, right? <laughs> yeah, right. In between events, for sure. Yeah. Sometimes you just had to hide out. So we yes, yeah, just to kind of stop talking because we would be out, you know, teaching for you know three, four hours, mm -hmm. and it's time to eat. So yeah, you know, oh you just kind of so funny. Yeah, so Glad funny. Nice. And the best luggage, right? Yeah, walk, literally this picture. You were walking through the lobby of the hotel, and yeah. you know the people at the at the desk just like look at you, like is she just walking through there with the ironing board? Yeah, is she stealing my like, ironing we're board? We're bringing it back. Yeah, we're bringing it back. Right. Yeah. Oh, let's so see. Funny. Oh, here, Marie. Here's Margie Hershberger. She says she has younger sisters that are also twins, and the youngest, number six oh, and seven. Now, Margie's gosh, from Lancaster, great. PA. Really? Yes. Oh, that's fabulous. I Another know. And not so place. Place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a few couple of weeks ago, she was in Ocean City, oh. uh, New Jersey, you know, for vacation. And oh. so we had a lot of fun talking about the food. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Aww. Okay. And there you are, signing your machine. Yeah. yeah. A couple well, of hair colors ago. Yeah. Now, oh, out on the West Coast, 
they do some crazy things, right? At Puyallup. Yeah. That was yeah. our um, big, uh, what was that called? That was our big Friday night event. There was like- Friday night live, there. yeah. And oh. we didn't actually wear those scissors on stage, but we kind no. of felt like that, right? No, but I know I would always put them on at Halloween when I was giving out candy and the little children, when they would come here, <laughs> were so frightened. They're like, look at me, like, what is wrong with this lady? It was so funny. <laughs> Do you need an ambulance? Have them. They came to Florida. I brought them. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Yeah. I have them too. I yeah. still have them. Okay. Oh, and then lastly, when oh. you're on the West Coast or in Seattle, you have to go that's to Pike's right. Market. Got to go to the fish market. That was yeah. fabulous. Beautiful place. So fun. Right. Absolutely. We have a fabulous country. We're so fortunate that we, we do. We party. do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have folks from, you know, New York. Uh, I'm not sure where Carolyn is, but she's a sister in New York State. Birdie is in Denver. Aww, we have a niece in Denver. And Judy Whitaker, she's a frequent um, guest here. And she, oh, she's Port. in Northport, Florida. Okay. Hi, Judy. Yeah. And we know we have a lot of Florida, a lot of Florida sewing peeps down here. I know that. For sure. For sure. <laughs> so our last event was in, um, it was in Palm Coast, yeah. Florida. And we had the pleasure of doing it at a, you know, with Cut Up and Sew. And the event was at a country club and we had a golf right. cart. How fun, right? Oh, that was super fun. Yeah. We yeah. Really There's another behind the scenes turnout. story at that event though. So imagine six years of traveling the country how many rental cars that would be how many bags of luggage oh, and so forth oh. and we you know after we packed up at this event this is the very last event that we did yeah. i shut the trunk of the rental car with yeah. the car keys in the trunk yeah everybody's gone everybody left remember yeah yeah all that i knew was i was happy it was you and not me <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, we, we got it figured out eventually, but it took them a while to get there. It did. And today, of course, just so you know, if you ever do that today, it can be um, opened remotely by the rental agency. But back then, you know, it's not that long ago, but no. they actually had to send out a locksmith. Yeah. And, you know, I know. Uh, oh, that was terrible. Great. Yeah, that was terrible. Yeah, okay, so we didn't have a lot of bad things happen. So that was just one little thing. So, yeah, yeah. that's right. That's right. Yep. We never lost luggage. No, never. Mm -mm. Yeah. Hard to believe. We did forget some things. We bought a lot of scissors on the road. We bought a <laughs> lot of USB sticks. Always had to make a run to Walmart at some point. Yeah. And <laughs> often an electrical cord because, you know, yeah. you have a lot of conversations with the, where you're going and yeah. don't always get the full thing. And no matter how yeah. many cords you bring, just we not one. would have to go to Radio Shack and get some special wire. Yeah. Yeah. I was so sad when Radio Shack closed. Yeah, I know. They saved our day for sure. That's right. Yeah. So let's take a look yeah. at, you know, your, some of your experiences yeah. with, um, you know, doing commercial work. And, right. um, you know, you've learned that the easiest thing to do, Marie, would be. Right. Yeah. Um, um, some of the easiest things are what I call it's a It's a baby lovey. It's like a half stuffed animal and a half blanket. And they're super easy to embroider. Um, this is something I would sell through my business and it's, um, they have a lot of different animals, but it's just a super sweet gift. People love them and it's a very easy thing to embroider and hoop. Um, yeah. And it's really for the newborn, right? So, well, it's yeah, it's for newborn. And, so quick. You know, and they're quiet, they're quiet little toys and they, yeah. little kids get attached to them a little easier to drag around than a blankie when they get you know, they make a little connection with them. So we have, yeah. I have one little niece that has two of them. They have one and then they have a backup. So, right. you know, awesome. for the days yeah. you have to wash it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the most challenging, right, is probably. Um, really, yeah, really hats. I mean, through the years, yeah. I've done many, many hats for businesses and for family and for friends. But uh, when you have a business and you who have, um, you have vendors that sell hats. I mean, there's literally like 200 styles of hats or more. You know, you have unstructured, structured, you have bucket hats, you have floppy hats. So it's it's very hard to um, do hats, even though you have the correct tube. You just have to plan ahead. And I would always buy one or two extra hats just as a backup because they're, they're very reasonable at a wholesale price. Right, for sure. So, um, yeah, that's yeah. that's just for me as a commercial yeah. that is always my downfall. <laughs> so hello to Anna Sidwell. She saw us in Kenwick, oh, Washington. Kenwick. Oh, yeah. What a lovely part of the country. Yeah, we love yeah. it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and so your most unique request? Oh, is? my goodness. Yeah, well, I started working with like an interior decorator in Ohio, and she had a client who um, redid his living room into a mini casino. So this is a roulette table, a regulation size, supposedly, that he bought. And um, I embroidered the cover, which is not real leather. It's, it's a vinyl, but it, we did this large monogram in metallic thread, of course, gold metallic thread. And I was really nervous about doing it, but you know what? It turned out great. I used that magnetic hoop when they first came out because this is probably about six years ago. I did yeah. this project, and uh, and before we knew about King Star Thread, right? Yeah, right. And and he loved it. He was a newly a new widower, so he mm -hmm. you know he had neighbors over to do the, you know come and gamble or yeah. for fun, I guess. But sure, sure. Yeah, it was a That's nice great. addition to his room. That's yeah. really great. Yeah. But then you've also had some really special heirloom items that you've created for people. Oh my gosh. I, you know, through uh, my business, I just met some of the nicest people. A lot of them locally at the time, because it was before the internet was really, you know, I had a website and everything, but I did a lot of um, like handkerchiefs for, for brides. I did a little wedding, a white bikini for a bride. Oh, you my know, goodness. Um, How sweet is that? Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, just through the years, you do so many unique things, um, yeah. christening, christening gowns that you would mm -hmm. embroider, like multiple family members that might have worn it, you know, their, mm -hmm. their initials and their date. And then this, of course, lots of baby blankets. Here's yeah. some so cute little, uh, babies yeah. that my customers have sent, you know, happy customer photos to me. I love that. You know, now that I don't Absolutely. live in Ohio anymore, some of these people are still, I'm still friends with. And Yeah. It just really know. warms your heart though. When you get yeah. a gift and then someone sends you a photo it of does. the baby, you know, yeah. using the yeah. gift. It's yeah. So Cause you know, I'll, I'll ship it and it'll be going to a recipient. And then, you know, a couple months mm -hmm. later, someone will send me a picture like, look at, you know, my niece, she yeah. loves her hobby. So it's okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, so uh, Rima Coxon from the Embroidery Garden has joined us oh. and she wants to know, do you embroider a lot of golf cart seats down in Florida? No, that's a good question, Reen. Um, I don't, no, uh, I don't do that. Actually, a lot of people down here are buying um, covers, like um, they're like a mesh and I guess I could embroider those, but I yeah. haven't really... I haven't okay, really so, focused on that yet. Yeah, here's the secret. Marie's not yeah. really working that much down there. Yeah. Don't tell my husband, no. Yeah. Okay, so Kathleen Queen wants to know, how did you both get started in embroidery? Wow. Oh, wow. That was you. Yeah. Um, yeah. A long, long time ago, I started, mm -hmm. I, I didn't start to sew till I was 27 years old. Right. And I started with home deck. I had a home with no curtains and learned how expensive they were. Right. So I took a, you know, a beginning sewing at Hayes Sewing Machine in Clifton Heights, New Jersey. I mean, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania and yeah. Hayes Sewing is still in business today, not in Clifton Heights, Pennsylvania, oh. but they've moved to Wilmington, Delaware. Oh, wow. And they too are a family of all girls. I think they have five daughters, Trevor oh. and Mary Hayes. Yeah. Uh, are the that. parents. And so yeah. I, that's where I began. And then um, I wound up teaching home deck for a, another dealer in the F Philadelphia suburb area. Right. And that's where I really started to fall in love with, you know, teaching. At, and then the Janome 8000 was released. And this dealer said, why don't you teach how to use this? And I said, I don't know anything about it. He said, well, nobody does. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and she did. <laughs> and I did. And yeah. um and then, you know, usually when I figure something out, one of the first people I call is Marie. And I'm like, Marie, man, you've got to do this. Come on. This is all you. You're going to love it. You're yeah. absolutely going to love it. And then I just talk her into doing it. And yeah. the next rest thing is you history. Know, yeah. yeah, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. And Marie yeah. has, you know, so she went kind of a different route. You know, right. um, she, she, her first real embroidery machine, Marie, was a, a multi-needle, right? A six needle? Yeah, that was the, yeah. well, I had your hand-me-down Junomi, I think. I had the hand-me-down Junomi. For a little bit. I was writing for the, the magazine, like, right. and just a couple articles. But then when I moved to Ohio and mm -hmm. I had kids, like, right. in sports, and I was like, you know what, I, I think I should make this, like, a yeah. you know, more lucrative business. So that's. Right. Because back at that, when we first started, we both lived in the Philadelphia area. So right. just about 25 minutes apart. And yep. then at the same year, I moved to Texas and she moved to Ohio. So right, right. it was a way most certainly for us to stay so close together. We were on yeah. the phone every day. You wrote for the magazine. Yeah. And then as your business grew and then, yeah. you know, I talked to you into hitting the road. 
Yeah. <laughs> that was great. It was so fun. It we was had... super fun to do it with my sister. Very fortunate. Such a blessing. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is one other heirloom um, gift that you yeah. made for a group. Yeah, maybe maybe an heirloom, but one of a good friend of ours. So we, there's like a, eleven really good girlfriends, and you know they're all back in Ohio, and some have moved mm -hmm. also. But one of our friends was diagnosed with breast cancer and she's doing great now, but we wanted Wonderful. to do something special. So we've had a lot of different gifts through her recovery and this was one of them and I put all our names on it. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, great. it was, yeah. you know, I'm sure she used it when she was doing her, her rehab and yes. right now. Right. So. Yes. Right. And, yeah. And I'm sure many of our viewers have similar stories. We all Absolutely. know it's a great way to show support that's to a right. family member or a friend who's going through that. That's right. And, um, yeah. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I used a makeup case at home um, yeah. that, you know, was Nancy Zeman's and you, yeah. made by her, you know, lots of story there, but I still That's use great. it every day. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But, okay. But, you know, you do have a favorite gift to make. And this is a great tip for those who are maybe thinking of, you know, yeah. starting out uh, selling their, their embroidered goods. So, right. Yeah, I mean, I started um, doing monogram towels, you know, as soon as it was probably the first thing I sold, like when mm -hmm. I had started my business. So then I've kind of ramped it up a little bit better than just a beach towel. And I would um, incorporate like a whole gift basket of towels. And usually I would um, wrap the entire thing with tulle, you know, mm -hmm. the netting, and then embroider the ribbon that goes around that and puts like the new couple's wedding date or their monogram or something on that. And yeah, through the yeah. years, we've, you know, we've taught that it's on your, you know, blogs. And I think I did that on It's So Easy years ago. So, yeah, sure. it's, it's out there somewhere. People want to yeah. look. <laughs> I think you did it on with Nancy Zeman, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. Monogram towels, great gift. People right. still, you know, they always love them, even if they're, you know, just on display somewhere. Yeah. But it's nice they're gift. always welcomed, whether it's a new bride or, That's you know. Right. Someone who's been living in the same house for 20, 30 years might be, oh, yeah. you know, time for new towels and upgrades. So never hesitate on, on giving towels yeah, to someone. Lots of modern takes on yeah. monograms now. So. Yeah. And, and great gift for a man or a woman or a family, Absolutely. right? Yeah. yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have lots of, you know, uh, memories of, you know, television work and so forth. And but I have a good one, you know, just this past just on Tuesday, the 21st was Nancy Zeman's birthday. So yeah. hard to believe that, you know, summer solstice was her birthday and, every, right. you know, yeah. I always think of her on the 21st. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, there's a unique thing that people may not know that the last guest on Sewing with Nancy that wasn't a family member was actually your daughter, Lindsay Zeno. The last person on the set. Uh, on, on and yeah, mm -hmm. on uh, yeah. PBS and you know in Madison, that was she was the very last person on right. that set. Yeah, and and I don't have a, a snippet of that, and shame on me. But Lindsay yeah. wrote, um, she's a rope basket extraordinaire. She has yeah. a a website and sells kind of high end rope baskets and so forth. That's and when great. Nancy saw this. I showed Nancy her website and, you know, Nancy, if you knew where she occasionally would go, she yeah. would just drop her jaw like, yeah. really? That's yeah, yeah, your yeah. niece? And so, yeah, 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 yeah she yeah. was so impressed with our Lindsay. Yeah. Who, it was know, just the anniversary totally. of that. I, I saw it on my Facebook post. Right. Yeah, cool. Right. Great memory. Was, yeah. yeah. And of course, Lindsay now still makes the baskets, but she's on to more exciting things too. That's right. She's Everything evolves. Real right? job, but. Yeah. yeah. Her yeah. real job. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, maybe we should talk about hooping, you know, that's why we're here right. but before we do that. Any oh. advice for embroidery? Um, well, yes, hooping? lots of advice, but probably one of the best things I think if you're really thinking about starting a business or if you're, you know, in the beginning stages, never quote a job until you actually have the embroidery design and the blank or the item that you're supposed to stitch it on. So if someone hires you to do uh, I don't know, something for their house or a pillow cover or a duvet or who knows what, um, make sure you have the design in hand so you know what the stitch count is. That way you'll be able to know how to price it. And also just to make sure that the item is embroiderable, you know, that it's not too, <laughs> too difficult, you know, right. I mean, right. Um, some things are just a little out of reach, but, and if you're yeah. a newbie, I suggest, you know, really practicing on a variety of things before you actually open a business, you know, and if you're not controlling the purchase of that item, right. let's say, you know, if your customer right. is bringing it to you, 
Ooh, yeah. that's like a, it's a remember risk. the old it's lost in space warning, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that's scary. I, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Don't like to do, but once in a while you, you do it. <laughs> right. I know. So. Okay. So we need to talk hooping. Let's go to the overhead camera okay. and take a look at just standard Where hoops. Okay. So this is a single needle hoop, right? You're all familiar with this. The interesting thing about this is it has one attachment. So the whole frame, the whole you know ring over here is only supported in one area. But on a multi-needle machine, we have two arms. We have two points of attachment, right? And it slides into the machine. Let's go back to that standard hoop. And you'll notice that it has an inner ring. Of course, I... I tightened that so really tight, tight so it wouldn't fall out. Now I can't get right. it out. Okay. So it has an inner ring, right? So that means the fabric is going to go across the outer ring and under the inner ring, up the other side and out. And so it's going to sit on top of this outer ring. On, on a, on a multi-needle hoop, it's totally different. It The outer ring is underneath the inner ring. So our fabric is going to be under the points of attachment. And that gives us the ability to use finished goods, tubular items, t-shirts, tote bags, onesies, that type of thing. Tubular machines were invented to embroider finished goods. Our flatbed machines that we're also familiar with were, in, were just, um, evolved into embroidery. They all started as a standard sewing machine, right? Flatbed, pieces, yardage of fabric being pieced together, going underneath the, the needle of the machine. They didn't change any of that. They just slid a pantograph onto it and attached the frame. So that's why it's two totally different approaches to hooping on these two different types of machines. So let's see, uh, Ann Philbeck, she says, oh, she's got both, yep, and good reason, <laughs> right? Lots of good reason to have both types of, of machines. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the multi-needle, if you have a finished item, you're gonna go to that, you, you know, for a t-shirt or a onesie or tote bag. Why right. would you even fuss with the flatbed, right, Marie? Right, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do it, absolutely, but if you have the multi-needle, the tubular machine, then, then go for that, for sure. That's right. Yeah. So we often call the tubular machines multi-needle machines because up until, you know, a handful of years ago, they had six, well, they had four, six, or 10, 12, or 15 needles. Mm -hmm. um, but then Baby Lock and Brother released a machine that has one needle, but it's tubular. Like Marie, you have your 12 right. needle there, your 10 needle. Yeah. It's my right. 10 needle. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, your and design can have 10 colors in it. They're not all going to stitch at once, of course, but you don't have to change mm -hmm. the thread. Right. So that's what makes it nice and easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then we'll take a look at the at the machine that I'm going to be working on today. And um, you'll see that that is a tubular machine, but it's a single needle. And that is actually the Baby Lock Alliance, which is the equivalent of the brother persona. So same thing. All right. So let's go ahead and... And I am on my totally tubular hooping station, right? Any of you have seen this before, two pieces of wood cantilevered together with a, uh, a, a plastic piece that elevates the part so that I can slide something over it. So I'm gonna use my Snap Hoop Monster. And remember, it's still Hoopapalooza here. Hoops are still on sale until the end of June. It's the only time we do it all, all year. And I have my magnetic top frame or bottom frame, you, the, on these machines, it's interchangeable. And here's my metal frame. So because I'm hooping a tubular item, I'm going to place my magnetic frame, the magnet side up on my uh, totally tubular hooping station. And then I'm going to take this tote bag. It's rather small as you can see it's not real deep it's about you know three maybe two and a half inches deep i have my template in place sunny girl i hope you're all <laughs> so downloading cute. sunny girl and she's so yeah. cute marie yeah i saw that um, yeah one of your giveaways i think right a couple weeks yeah ago. right we give Super it away give one away every week and she's yeah. this week's so, so i can feel my frame inside now our my camera's not set up today with the perfect alignment laser but i could have that on there and it would be 
illuminating a beam that I would align the template with. And then right. I'm just going to take that top frame, the metal frame, and snap it in place. I can feel right. that it's aligned. That's yeah. like easy it is as it is. Mm -hmm. I didn't good. use stabilizer, but I can. You know, I'm going to just float that underneath. But sure. I also could have had that in the, um, you know, in the frame. But, you know, just for now, I'm going to pull it out. So we go over to the machine. Right. Now, when I carry this to the machine, I'm going to use both handles. I'm not going right. to touch the machine in he, uh, the hoop in here. Just hold it by the handles right. and go over to the machine. That's and I want to and make sure that that throat is going to go inside of the tote bag. I got to keep that handle yeah, under this control. This is when it gets a little tricky with the handles. So you want to make sure that the top handles out of the way of the of the arms and then I always feel underneath the bag right and yep. inside too and make sure that other handle isn't inside the bag or I'm going to get stitched right Just so I have that it. under control <laughs> under here you that's know right. it's... Just let it float down and it won't be in the way that's right make sure those little handles are clicked in tight too right yep On they the snap arms. into place yeah. and yeah. you know you can hear it snap so if you don't right. hear it then you're not engaged so let's see if we can that's get right. the microphone to pick that up yeah. so I've lifted it out and you, you, you can really hear that cool. snap mm -hmm. that's right it's important. And then Marie, I got to get my needle over to the center of the crosshair, right? right? So, yep. You would use your jog keys. I also like to, if you're using it like a fairly big design, maybe just use the tracing feature on your screen just to make sure that you're clearing that hoop. Okay. You do that, Eileen, just to make sure if it's really big. I mean, you don't have to do it right now, but you know, if you're doing a large monitor, sure. okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, a good I could, idea to make sure. sure we could do the whole trace. Yeah. It's just, you know, well, just then they're going to see that I actually don't have that design brought up on the screen. Well, that's okay. <laughs> just, it's TV, right? It's, it's the TV. internet. Not everything's okay. real. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll just go back to center. But okay. yeah, you would definitely do that. And then Marie would also make sure that the orientation, the sunny girl was facing Absolutely. this way and that her face was, you know, her mouth wasn't Upside in down. the opposite direction on Marie. the screen, right? And then, I mean, once you're in the right spot, don't oh. forget to take the template off. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And you got to okay, peel that away. Awesome. I always peel it from the back. Yeah. And just like, you know, really peel it. Just don't yeah. let it, you know, fabric. slip away. This is a brand new piece of print and stick. So it's nice yeah. and tacky, but right. basically that's how you would do it. Good. Yep. Hey, good job. Thank you. <laughs> oh Not your goodness. first tote bag. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to go back and we'll move on to a onesie. Okay. Love my onesies. Yeah. Okay. So uh, again, I have it magnet side up. Mm -hmm. I have a, um, my onesie with my template in place. So we'll let you all read that. That says, relax. My, pa uh, my parents are doctors. <laughs> oh, I know who that's for. Yeah. That's for my <laughs> new grandbaby. Both her parents right. are doctors. Aww. So thought that'd be a fun thing to surprise them with. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So I can feel that I'm, you know, in the right position. I can That's feel right. that frame. Yep. And then and I'm going to make to sure, that, yeah, that that neckline's out of the way of the frame too. That's always can be yeah. tricky when you're doing onesies. Yep. Oh, right. That looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. That's I so do good. have stabilizer fused onto the wrong side. I have that no show cutaway. So it's mm -hmm. already fused. I don't have to worry about any stabilizer. But because this is flat, you know, and stabilized, I can pull on this stretchy knit and not have to worry about any fabric distortion. That's right. So, That's great. Yeah. That's okay. Then cool. I'll, I'll just take it off here mm -hmm. and then back over to the machine. Now, you know, what happens on a onesie is you know, the, everything just wants to collapse, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to open that up and, you know, make sure that we're clearing the, um, the throat of the machine, kind of push that down. Get the arms in place. I want to hear that snap. There we go. Right. And okay. now we're going to push that back. Yep. And get out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm now definitely I'm going to have to rotate this 180 because I'm sure on the screen it will it's come, going up. To come up the other way. Correct. Yeah. That's why you always leave that template on till you right before you stitch because you think you have it figured out, right, Eileen? And then yeah. you, you look at it on the screen and it's reverse. So absolutely good idea. That's so true. Yeah. And if I did that, you know, it would be relax. My parents are doctors upside down. And then I could add, but my grandmother sure isn't right. 
So and neither is yeah. her aunt. <laughs> right. So it's super easy. You know, that's yeah. the four by four. One of our favorite hoops, and I'll tell you, you'll if you use multi-needle, you know, machines, tubular machines, you're going to use a five by four. I mean a four by four a lot. A lot. Yeah. Uh, right. Because so, yeah. that's your oh, yeah. um yeah. It's very helpful. Okay. So let's see. Ann Philbeck says uh she said she learned that after the first, I guess. Oh, yeah. You know, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we did have someone ask, my stabilizer always slides when dropping down the magnetic hoop. <clears throat> so, Michelle M., are you working on a multi-needle machine or a flatbed machine? T tell us in the comments and, and I'll address, you know, either way. So, yeah, Michelle, that is a cute saying, isn't it? You know, so fun. <laughs> yeah. They'll love it. They'll it was, love it. Yeah. I think they would put it on the side of their car. Oh, maybe not. That's no, probably not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we did the four by four. Now, what are we going to move up to? Oh, let's go to a larger eight by eight. Okay. And before we actually go to the eight by eight, let's talk about the eight by eight. So mm -hmm. the eight by eight snap hoop monster actually comes in two versions. One for the Baby Lock Alliance and Persona, and it has that label right on it. Oh, it tells smart. you that. Mm -hmm. And all that means on this machine, and we're going to do it in a minute, I'm just going to move my arms, right? I'm going to widen the distance between the arms, but I don't have to do anything else. On the 10 needle, Marie, the, the machine that you have right behind you, right. you have to switch the arms. arms. You have to yeah. put the B arm on. Yeah, right. the B arm. Yeah, it's like a deeper yeah. arm. So if you want to do right. like quilts. But also, I, you know, I, I don't know that you I could move this. Uh, I could move this just for a minute. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. So you can see the whole hoop. But these hoops as you can see, are not exactly identical in width, right? right? I'm going to right. even up the sewing field. But mm -hmm. notice how the one on the bottom, the one for the 10 needle and 6 needle, is a little wider than the one for the Persona and Alliance. So that's one difference. That's in the width. Also, on the actual um, the clamp, the part that goes into yeah. the machine, this... Uh, bent metal is only about three quarters of an inch. And on the other hoop, it is about an inch and a quarter. So mm -hmm. I know minute things. And of course, when you purchase these hoops, you just have to purchase the right one from Dime, from your dealer. And, and it's clearly marked, clearly marked. Right. But but it's Sometimes. good to know that you that you marked those because some people might have both machines and you know they might want to interchange them and you can't do that, right? Okay. So mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They're not interchangeable. Or, you know, if you upgrade or something in that right. matter. Okay. Right. So I'm going to set aside that 12, 10 needle one because I'm not using that machine today. Mm -hmm. And then we'll bring our um, totally tubular back in place. And I flipped it over for the larger surface to be on top. And I'll put my hoop mat on in place. And then I'm going to take the frame that I swear is here somewhere. It's there. Marie, <laughs> I can't help you. to tap I'm in, dance now. I'm in Florida. I can't help you. Well, I do want to point out that the hoop mat, the blue mat, is just probably one of my favorite inventions that you came up with. And I wish we would have had it when we were teaching our events. Do you remember how... Uh, so oh. we used to slip around, we would have tablecloths. You never really knew what you were going to encounter when we taught some of these events, you know, and yeah. we had, we did team sewing. So there would be three people at a machine or sometimes four, of, of course, taking turns, not all the time, but the hooping is, is really challenging. And if we would have had these when we taught our classes, I think that would have really helped a lot of our, our students, you know? Yeah, and, for sure. They're just, they're great because they roll right up out of the way if you need to put it aside, but you can leave it out on your table and they're just, yeah. they're foolproof. They're awesome. I love it. Yeah. So before we, one. before we go on, you wanted me to talk about this big clunky uh, tote bag right. that I have with these funny handles, you yeah. know, it's kind of a nautical thing. And yeah, there's really... so many, yeah, cool different types yeah. of tote bags out now. And you'll see these thick rope handles or maybe even thick yeah. leather, but tied in knots. And some people think, oh, I wouldn't be able to get that 
like through my machine or or through the arms of the machine or whatever. But you really can as long as you are hooping it like like yeah, like just like you're doing with the magnetic hoop. And when you ready when you're ready to insert it on the machine, you you just make sure that the handles are floating over top of the the back the bar of the machine that the mechanism that actually moves the arms. Right. Right. And make sure the monogram would be down, you know, as far away from those knots at the end of that. Um, right. Just because, you know, you come across some of these unique things and they can, it can be done, but you just have to babysit it a little bit. Like we would say, that's not one of those projects. You walk away and get a cup of tea. Right exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we used to say that all the time. Right. But that was really a good point about where to place that template. You know, yeah. we often think it should go, oh, close up to the edge, but not yeah. so much. You know, not always. think about yeah. the frame for sure. Right. And then, you know, right. you may want to center it in the height of the bag. So the if bag. that's the yeah. case, you know, you get find that bottom, measure right. the distance between, you, you know, bottom edge to right. the top and then center the template that way. And of course, Absolutely. also. Absolutely. Yeah, just make your life easier, right? Yeah. It's all about making your life a little yeah. easier. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead over to the machine and I'm going to change uh, the arms to a five by seven. So mm -hmm. I can just put that tote bag on there and right. you can walk me through it. Which is what you have to do every time that you have, if you have one of these machines and you're using a different size hoop, the arms have to be adjusted, um, whether it's for the four by four, the five by seven or the eight by 12, whatever. And um, you have to, you know, just, it's not hard. It's just two little screws and then you're all set right. up for your, for your next hoop. But again, That's you know, quick. definitely carry it, you know, by the handles, right? Absolutely. Don't carry yep. it by the hoop, just yes. those handles. Right. So now I have that big rope, you know, handle. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure that the bottom one is it's underneath totally the out of the way. Right. And yeah, not hanging yeah. off the table. Right. And then I'm just going to insert this into the frame. Of course, I That's didn't right. move it in the right position. Yeah. And, th and those handles can probably even hang down behind the bag, really, if, if necessary, just as long as your bag can move freely when you. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Okay, well, I, let's pretend. pretend. Yeah, we're just going to pretend that's in it's there. But basically, same thing. All right. Yeah. Um, it's hard to do things yeah. live <laughs> with an audience. <laughs> right. All right. But I got to get that eight by eight on here. So let, let me okay. do this properly, get it on that's in the right, right position. Okay. There we go. That sounds like it's right. Okay. Yeah, last well, time we did a Facebook works. Live, we were in the studio together, I think. Wasn't I at your house together? I think we did that. Oh, my gosh. Why won't this go on? Oh, what am I doing wrong, Marie? I don't know. I'm just I don't saying. either. There you go. There we go. All right. And now we can tighten right. it up. Okay. Perfect. So now we know it fits. Now we can hoop. So That's back right. over to the machine. Yeah, I you mean, just kind of demoed it just to double check. Right. It's a little easier to do it with a with an empty hoop than with your hoop loaded with something heavy. Sure. Or heavy hoop. Yeah. So I've right. done that many times just to make sure. Okay, so now I have this uh, nice T-shirt with this big template on it. So cute. Uh, Just in uh, time for the fourth. Mm -hmm. Right, for sure. Nice. So I'm going to dress Slide the board. Yep. Right? And yeah. again, I'm going to feel my frame. Yeah. And then just take that and snap it into place. Keep my hands out of the way. That's I can, right. you know, pull on this fabric. Now, I have a pretty big bubble here. So I'm just going to lift this frame. Got to, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to lift this frame. There we go, just a right. little bit, and then smooth that collar, yeah. that ribbing there. And uh, you know, I could yeah, probably probably reposition this template down just a little bit. It doesn't have to be that close to the neckline. Right. Yeah. The this most is important thing is to be centered, right? And if you had to go down half an inch, right. you could go down half mm -hmm. an inch, right? Nice. Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, again, we're going to go over to the machine and carry it by the handles. That's right. And notice how I put my my shirt up above the frame a little bit so that I can see the throat. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to snap that into place and open click. up that nice. field. What's and that, I, uh, Yeah. And then it clicked into place. And then I would, um, mm -hmm. I know you're doing that. Feel underneath. Yeah, definitely feel yeah. underneath. Make sure the bottom of the t-shirt isn't caught anywhere, the sleeves. Yep. 
again, ask me how I know. We have had that happen, right? Yeah, for sure. Now, when you're at the screen, what's the other thing we need to do? We want to make sure the design is going to stitch in the right orientation. So, right, for sure. Look at the screen, rotate if if needed. Make sure you have the right color thread. Yep. Ooh, you're jogging it. Yeah. There yep. you go. There we go. So I would be happy with that. Perfect. I've confirmed that the orientation is correct. And then I'm just going to peel this back yeah. off the t-shirt. And, you know, we didn't talk about it, but I do have stabilizer. The no-show uh, cutaway is fused right. to the wrong side of this t-shirt. Right. Um, re remove that template and then it's just ready right. to stitch, right? Yeah. And I don't know if people know, but once you already embroider the design and then you can iron that fusible stabilizer again and it'll release the adhesive and then you can just trim around the design so you don't have a big right. 8 by 12 patch of stabilizer yeah. on the inside of your t-shirt anyway right. it's all the directions Marie, tell us about the time that you went to the indians game oh my gosh that was so great yeah. uh, a couple of years ago we went to the indians um baseball team which are now called the guardians the cleveland guardians and we had a, a suite for my husband's company or whatever and um this woman had a, a new um, Indian's jacket on with the water soluble stabilizer on the jacket back, like the entire piece. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if she just bought it and put it on or thought that was part of the design, but yeah. you know, being an yeah. embroiderer, I just, oh, I was, I was dying. I wanted to take a picture, but I didn't. It was right. you know, funny. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. Yeah. So one of our friends, Ann Philbin said, no, no stupid question. Absolutely. No stupid question. So she says, why print out a design? Well, one, so I think, so you can see what it looks like. Um, is it going to be in the, in the right orientation when you get ready to embroider it? Um, and I mean, I just think it helps you as, as an embroiderer to see how and where it's going to stitch and, and make sure that it's uh, appealing. You know, some embroidery designs, if you're doing a t-shirt, maybe it's too small or maybe it's too big on a lady's t-shirt or in the wrong spot. So I think um, printing a template is very helpful. Did I do it every time when I had a business? Probably not, but <laughs> because it was time consuming, but um, I would always use my target stickers, which I'm a big fan of. Um, so anyway, that's why you would print out a design. Yeah, but you are definitely always planning the location of the embroidery design, whether that's by a, mm -hmm. a target sticker and you would determine that placement with a an item template or measuring, right? you know, the distance, like on a tote bag, right? You right, would measure right. the center. Yeah. So we never just hoop and wing it, right? Right. No, definitely yeah. not. Mm-hmm. And it's just great to see it, you know, what it looks like. And if you are digitizing your own embroidery designs, or let's say it's lettering and you're using lettering software and you're writing something on right. uh, that you're going to embroider, you will not see the mistake until <laughs> it's stitched. I can yeah. tell you that, right? Yeah. We've known so, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So give yourself, you know, one more opportunity to proof it, to edit that's it. Great. And that's on the printed out template because. That's great. That's oh, great. man. I have lots of <laughs> we've what seen we call it all. Yuck style, right? Yeah. 20 some years. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm a big okay. fan of, of practicing on things from like Goodwill or Salvation Army. Remember we, we talked yeah. about that. We would teach that in our events. Right. Very helpful to practice on something like that, a mm -hmm. polo shirt that you can buy yeah. for $3. And yes, just... you know, or let's say you buy yourself a beautiful new silk blouse or, you, you know, a poly or something mm -hmm. like that, that you're really looking forward to wearing. It's going to become mm -hmm. part of your wardrobe. And, uh, but you've never embroidered on that type of fabric before. That's a good reason to go to right. a thrift store and find something of the same fabric, fabric. and practice on that. And if yep. it works out great, if it doesn't, well, you've, haven't ruined your good item. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So let's talk about a towel, a terry cloth towel. And I have one here. You know, one that's your gifts. favorite gift, right, mm -hmm. Marie? Love it. Love to so get it. So you've stitched yes. an awful lot of them. Okay. I absolutely have. Yeah. Yeah. So I have my uh, five by seven here and I'm going to put tearaway stabilizer on okay. the hoop. Now notice I have my metal frame down first which is the opposite of what we've been doing, right? right so a, right. a towel is flat goods. It's not right. tubular, right? It's just a right. single flat good. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to uh, bring that target sticker, the location, the design area mm -hmm. of the towel into the frame. 
I can feel, you know, my frame and I, I'm not centered, so I can bring it down a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, somewhat centered. And right. then I need to get the right top, which would be the five by seven magnetic. You can't believe how dangerous I am here. <laughs> I, I wish I could it. see a wide shot. <laughs> oh boy. It is so not pretty. Okay, So then I can feel that snap together. Right. And you know, I'm happy with that. That's practically dead center. Yeah. yeah, it looks great. And so you can now, use that that hoop, you know, along the border to make sure it's straight too, which is perfect. Right, for Another sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let me turn the hoop so they can get a better look yeah. at that. So what Marie's saying is, yeah. you know, if you align your hoop frame with the border, if you are uh, parallel, then your design will also be square. Right. So use that as a tip. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I have lifted that top you know that excess towel out of the way over the hoop so that i can see what i'm doing right. gotta get it underneath the needle yep. and then snap into place open up that design area and now i just want to center my needle over that target sticker and i am ready to stitch that's right. But notice, you know, this is totally different. This is the opposite of what we've been doing. Flat goods, the magnetic uh, frame goes on top. Finished goods, yeah. it goes underneath. Yeah, it's really a versatile tool. It really is. Yeah. It's nice to mm -hmm. have that. Yep. It's a great tool. Yeah. Okay, so um, we had a customer who, <laughs> or one of our viewers who wanted to know about sewing, um, hooping, water soluble stabilizer and having it move around on her hoop. So I thought I'd show her how we do that. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna move some of this out of the way. I'm gonna make, pretend that you, you all think I do this all the time, that I don't just hoop right on top of what you know, I just previously hooped. <laughs> so, um, and then I'm gonna maybe ask my friend back there, Sam, to get me that four by four at the very top. Okay, thank you, awesome. And then I'm going to put my uh, my four by four on this on the uh, hoop mat. You know, remember hoop mats off is yeah. awesome because my bottom frame is not going to move, right? Right. I have my two layer layers of water soluble stabilizer. Okay. And you know, theoretically, it wouldn't have a crease in it, right? But it right. does. So I'm going to take my top frame and I place it perpendicular to the bottom because this is sheer. I can see the frame underneath. Right. And then I smooth out this stabilizer and I hold it beyond the frame. And my fingers are not on the frame. They're beyond it. And then I'm just going to drop that. And now it hasn't moved and I can snug that, make it nice and tight. And that's a great way to ensure that it doesn't hop. Now, another thing I want to show you is many of you um, have trouble with maybe outlines uh, aligning after, you know, stitching water soluble. So what I do is I take a, like a flower head pin or a T pin and I insert it into that water soluble stabilizer, bringing it up hmm. along the edge. And I can put that pin on each side. See, I'm in the office. So this is what my pin cushion looks like. <laughs> Push Shoot pins me. and Push pins, safety pins, you know, probably a couple of screws in there. Nothing that really belongs in the sewing room, but that's okay. Oh, God. I know. So funny. At home, I have multiple pin cushions that have different types of pins, you know, like mm. I have one pin cushion just for my flower heads, and then I have mm. another pin cushion just for my glass head, two inch long. Wow. Yeah, I'm a little picky with the pins. Okay. okay, so this one, I have the metal frame underneath, so I can't make it come up. So I just kind of right. shove it in there anyway, and yeah. it helps. Okay. So this really well, stops, yeah, yeah, it stops stabilizer creep. Okay. You know, so. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Okay, Car Carla Noel Hunter wants to know, do you use stabilizer for the towel? Absolutely. On the towel, I would have used a tearaway wash away is what I use. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't use a topper on my towels because I make sure that the design that I use is sufficient, is digitized properly for terry cloth. So, right. you know, because toppers are, they're water soluble, right? So once you wash it, it's gone. Right. So anyway, that's fun. Good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Ann Philbeck says everything belongs in the sewing embroidery room and long arm room. Oh, you have a long arm room. Mm -hmm. 
Our yeah. older sister has one of those. Yeah. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Um, uh, Everybody has their little tools and their little tricks, right? And we always listen, learn something. What's listen that? to Joanne Banco. She says... One day she got caught in the rain with a, a roll water soluble stabilizer in her hand. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good terrible. one. That's, that's terrible. a good one. <laughs> yeah. And Ann Philbeck says it's great to have helpers. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, it funny. is. And Sam, that's he's cute. He's uh, he's our creative director here at Dime. He wears many hats. And today he is hoop getter. Oh, hi, Dory. Look. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm ready. Dory's I'm here. Dory, yeah. one of my neighbors in Naples. Absolutely, yeah. Dory comes almost every week. Yeah. Oh yeah, so fun. I know. And Renee, oh. you need the hoop mat. The hoop mat is indispensable. Now, remember, the hoop awesome. mat is for hooping. Do not use a rotary cutter on it. You will slice it right in half, but then you'll have two small hoop mats. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I've gotten so creative on what Great. I do with the hoop mats that we've cut up you know, by mistake here, which oh, if you think okay. you're doing it in your sewing room. You can imagine what we're doing over here. Yeah, right? Right. yeah. And, uh, but they're great liners for like, um, small plastic tubs, you know, they, mm. you don't oh, want yeah. things to slide around, slide around. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Awesome. Okay. So let's see if you embroider a puffy vest and have snap poop, what part of the frame goes inside? Ooh. That's a good question, Carla. Mm -hmm. Um, well, does it zip open? If it zips yeah, open, it then it's not really a problem. Open, yeah. I would probably put the magnetic uh, mm -hmm. frame on top is mm -hmm. what I would do for yeah. sure. Yeah. And they're fun to make. I, I gave my daughter a monogrammed one for Christmas a couple years mm -hmm. ago. And, yeah. um, you know, really, yeah, you know, I didn't think much of it. I just put her yeah. initials on it. Oh, my goodness. It was like V. Yeah. Like, Super really? popular. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. really nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Carla, it zips yeah. open. Yep, so go ahead and open that mm -hmm. up and yeah. put that magnetic frame on top. You'll just have a, a stronger hold, you know, that, yeah. all that cushion. I don't know how big of a puff vest yeah. it is. So. There's limitations, yeah. but yeah, that would be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's For see. Sure. Um, let's go so with Joanne Banco. She says that she just cut her hoop mat the other day. Yeah, oh, you, yeah. you should know better, Joanne, but it's okay. Yeah. Now you have two yeah. small Now we know. It's not horrible. Yeah. Some of our viewers have duct tape them together, like from the backside, that works too. That works, yeah. For sure, yeah. But they are on sale this yeah. week um, for, awesome. yeah, something really wonderful, I'm sure, which I kind of mm -hmm. blew through. Uh, yeah, 1999. 1999. So, yeah, you'll nice. take advantage of that. They're Definitely great. Helpful thing, yeah. Love it. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Sharon Cream, she has the hoop mat and she can't live without. Love to hear that. Yeah. Well, you know, many of you ask, um, how, you know, and even in the comments today, oh, oh, I just found, uh, I just found Dime and how do I, you know, or I just found you live. How do I keep notified and continue to watch between friends? So mm -hmm. there's an easy way to do it. You can text to us, just that number there, 22828, and then you will have, you will receive a notification. So there are three easy steps. I've kind of split these up a little bit, I believe. Here we go. So step one is send that text to Dime to, Dime, to join. And then, uh, or you can go to our profile page on Facebook and select the link on the pinned post. Now you'll know what that is, right? When, when you go there, you'll see that pinned post and you just uh, select that link. And once it's clicked, another page will load and you'll fill out that information and then we'll notify you when we're going live. But we do go live every Thursday at one o'clock. Sometimes, um, occasionally we'll go live more than once during the week, but it is one o'clock central time, Dallas, Texas time every um, Thursday. Yeah, and Sharon Crean, you just signed up for notifications. Sweet. Smart girl. Yeah, if you That's don't want to awesome. miss it, it's fun. And we're so grateful when you join us. We love having you here. It yeah. is really more fun when you join us. So, you know, never it hesitate nice. if you have the, the time. comments are great and the questions are yeah. great. It's nice. Yeah. You feel part of the, you know, part of the program there. <laughs> right. And, you know, Marie, speaking of programs, this year we've had a free embroidery design program all year. And we call it On the House. Oh, so, and Marie, you know, you and I, we grew up at the Jersey Shore and right. our father owned an Irish bar. So, you know, drinks on the house was a common <laughs> phrase in our childhood, right? Yeah. And that's 
that's, you know, the whole idea behind the on the house program that it's our free mm -hmm. gift to our customers. And, oh, so nice. um, and of course, you don't have to be a customer. You Anybody can just enjoy our free gift. And then we ask mm -hmm. that you um, when you download it and you stitch it out, that you will post it on social media and tag it with Cute. dime so long or on the on the house. Now, look what Rene Wilcoxon did. I love you it. You do a great job. Yeah, now, the so ice cream cute. cone was the free design that, you know, right. chocolate, vanilla and strawberry. And we actually in the offering that we gave, we show it in red, white and blue. It's a patriotic oh. design. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Nice. But what she cute. did, she yeah, she took it into Perfect Embroidery Pro mm -hmm. and she drew a rectangle at the t first. She shrunk it down because it's a rather large design. So she shrunk it down. Okay. And because she's in Dime Software, Perfect Embroidery Pro she used the c2s format because that gives her complete flexibility on sizing right. Right. so she shrunk it down she drew a rectangle at the top of the top top dip and then did an outline around the rest of the comb took those two outlines and That's combined cool. them and yeah. then she had that oh that so cute, cute. that's really cute Stop. right yeah, it's adorable. You know, that Reem Wilcox and Marie, man, she just, she oh, just jumps on things. She's so the, impressive. Some of the so most in, favorite articles I ever wrote for the magazine were her designs. You remember, my, like, the little checkbook cover and oh, you know, a I whole know. bunch of different things. Yeah. So, yeah, I know. Everybody yeah. loves what she does. Really great mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, so let's see, Star Raymond, she cut a corner of her hoop mat, but caught it before she went too far, and it's still very usable. <laughs> yeah. Now she puts the mat underneath her cutting table when not hooping. Yeah. Smart woman. Yeah, Smart right. Smart woman. <laughs> yeah. For sure. That's okay, awesome. and then we had another uh, lady, Rita Vasco, who stitched Sunny Girl. Isn't oh, Sunny Girl cute. so cute? No, oh. and, you know, when I hooped that black tote bag, I had the template of the four by four sunny girl, which is just her face and the fun sunglasses. Uh -huh. But uh, the five by seven version has, you know, a body and a pigtail yeah. and all that. Isn't that cute? She did a really good job. I really know. Nice. She really did. She Very really nice. did. And so, you know, there's a good example how many of us, you know, we take something out of the hoop and we're like, eh, you know, yeah. but when you put it on figure, right, because yeah. it's a stretchy fabric. Mm -hmm. And it's filled out in the yeah. way that it's going to be worn. It looks beautiful. Yeah. And it's pressed and it looks, you know, it's all trimmed. It looks really nice. Yeah. Yeah, she's a good Absolutely. Job. Excellent. Absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Well, they all want to know what is this week's free design. And that is in the patriotic um, theme. We have the rock and guitar, the star. Oh, that's cool. Batter. Isn't that cool? Very nice. Yeah. It's really, really love nice. That. We love I that. Know. And three colors, super easy to stitch, right, Marie? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I have a few so, people I think would like that. I know a couple people would like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and last week we did flip flops that were adorable. Oh, cute. so cute. You got to go grab them, Marie. Yeah. I'm going to go do that too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I know. Super fun. Super, super fun. Well, next week I have, well, this week, right now, Hoop Mat's on sale. And remember, Hoopapalooza is still active, so you can take advantage of that special pricing. On July 1, it goes up in, on to uh, the regular price. So take advantage. If you're looking for a hoop, this is the time. And that's multi-needle, single needle machines, magnetic, and sticky. So yeah, let's see. And let's see, Carol, Carla wants to know, can you download the previous on the house designs all year? Every week, there is a free design. You can still go back to January, the first week in January, and download all of them. So please do that. Take available, uh, take available of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Charlene says the guitar is super fun and cute. It is, right? And yeah. it's 4th of July right around the corner. It's adorable. Yeah. Star Raymond says her hubby would love it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And Joanne Banco, she's going to do it with exquisite metallic thread. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. That's it's great. So, fun. so many fun comments. So let's see. Next week, I do have another guest, and Ashley Jones is going to be in the house joining me. Great. We're going to talk all about embroidery placement and, you know, who knows what else comes up because Ashley is so talented. So it's going to be great to have her here. Marie, she lives oh, down right. in your neck of the woods, kind of. She's That's in Key right. Largo. Yeah. Down in the Keys, I know. I'll have to uh, look her up if I get down there. I want to have a summer plan. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. good. 
Fine. Well, Marie, I have to give you a round of applause for joining me today. <laughs> Those little hands. <laughs> little hands. It was so fun. It was so fun. So good to see you again and connect yeah. with some other embroidery friends. Yeah. Thanks for Absolutely. having me. You bet. Come back anytime, Marie, because I get it. so excited when my sister's oh, in the house. <laughs> thank you. All right. All right. All right. Bye, Take care. Bye, everyone. Thanks for Alrighty. joining us. Bye-bye.